rolling. Hello everybody on YouTube, it's Roz from Roz.com here. Uh, somebody gave me a spare actuator, turbo actuator. This is a VG uh, variable geometry turbo control actuator for I think a 500 series Cummins turbo. And um, I thought I'd make a video on how to take it apart, maybe freshen it up, put new bearings in it, and uh, maybe troubleshoot it, test it. Uh, I've got a couple of these laying around that you know people have given me over the years as spares or this and that. And uh, I've had a lot of people on my uh, my website ask me, well, what bearings goes in it? How do you take it apart? You know, how can you check it? And things like that, because these things are getting expensive. Uh, a few years back, I replaced mine. I think it was like 500 bucks or something. And now people are saying they're almost a thousand bucks or more in places when you buy them. So they've gone way up in price. So, you know, if there's something you can do to extend the life or something you can do to repair it yourself. If some, you know, minor things happen to it. I don't think it's a bad idea uh, to make a video of that. I'm not a professional, uh, you know, repair shop. I'm just a guy who, you know, owns a truck and I do stuff in my backyard. I've got a little little machine shop out in the back of my uh, my place here, and uh, thought I would just uh, take it apart and uh, play discovery with it. Uh, I haven't had a couple of parts before, so I'm, it's not totally new to me, but. Um, Maybe if you can help somebody else out there, you know, down the road, maybe he's got one that uh, maybe they can try to fix themselves. Like I said, you should probably follow whatever manuals come with it or whatever proper procedures if you if you want to get official documentation. This is not official uh, information, but uh, I figured I'd share my experience with it. So uh, let's uh, let's go in the shop, take it apart. Cut. Rolling. Okay, we're in my shop. My little homemade workshop back here in the backyard. I got a little bit of this and that, a little press, and welder, uh, you know, soldering stuff, heat guns, grinder, you know, typical stuff you'd want to do if you were working on your own things. And uh, I'm just going to put this thing in the press, or uh, the vise, sorry, and um, get my glasses on because I'm becoming an old man here. And the first thing I notice on this thing, when I look at the wiring, uh it's quite worn the harness but the wiring seems okay but right here definitely got a broken wire right here and uh if our memory serves me right that's the plus 12 volt connection uh that's so that the power wire going to this controller is broken uh the second wire would be the ground wire the, the zero volts and then this would be CAN bus uh, plus and minus these two wires on the far right, according to the plug, if I remember right. So um, we definitely need to fix the wiring. Uh, and I do have, uh, actually, I do have some of these pins for these plugs. And they do come apart. They're not easy to get apart. They do come apart. So maybe we'll make a little bit of video on that too, of replacing that one pin and, and re-soldering that wire, uh, maybe fixing that plug at some point. But uh, like I say, I'm not trying to refurbish this thing like brand new. I'm just trying to, re you know, see if we could get it repaired or see what's wrong with it. Maybe change the bearings in it. Maybe freshen it up and get it uh, functional again like it is. So um, let me find a wrench or a gun, a screw gun, and uh, take this thing apart. Now, I do know that this size screw is what, a T Torx T15, did I say? or T25. T25? Or is it a T15? Um, I can look in the box over there. Okay, well, it might be a T25. But, um, and then we have, uh, you've taken a couple apart before. Was it 30? 30 inch pounds. 30 inch pounds of torque, okay. Inch pounds, not foot pounds. <laughs> yeah, 30 inch pounds of torque normally on these screws. But this thing's quite old. It's probably going to be more than that because it's probably going to be stuck. So um, I'm going to just try to take this thing apart here and uh, be real careful about it. If one of these gets really tight, I'll work it back and forth so I don't snap the screw because it's real easy to break these. So um, let's take this thing apart and uh, come back. I have a screw here. I have a screw here on the outer corners. Uh, these two outer corners are two screws. And these two very outer corners are the other two screws. And the whole top should come off. And then these screws uh, are for the coolant chamber or the coolant heat exchanger. And we'll take that apart too. We'll look inside there and see if there's any deposit buildups or anything. If uh, this thing is any good or if it looks like it's worth saving. 
that one came on. Um, this one, the the, uh, the screw head has some dirt and trash in it. So I'm going to put this down here. I'm just going to tap it to try to clean it up a bit. And I'll probably do this one too. So my screw head goes all the way to the bottom. Make sure I get a good bite on it so I don't strip it out. You dropped something. Yeah, it was one of the screws. We'll get it. All right. Okay, um, I found another bit. It is actually, can you see that in the camera? Oh, upside down. A Torx T20. Yep, it's a T20. So let's take the last one out. That one came out. Oh, it's a little tight. So because it's a little tight, I'm just going to work it back and forth a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that one's quite tight. There we go. Yeah, it's a lot better. Otherwise, we'd have a horrible time trying to break the or get the broken threaded part of the screw out of the housing. So we don't want to play with that. Let's take this out. And uh, there, there we have four screws. And we, I've never had this open. This is the first time I'm opening it. <clears throat> so we don't know what we're going to find inside. And it's quite, there we go, it's quite stuck together. It did pop loose. But uh, if it doesn't pop loose, if it doesn't want to come loose, there's one little trick right here from the other ones I've taken apart. Uh, there's a little bit of a lip right here on the front side of it. You can get a screwdriver under and you can get a little bit of, a little bit of pressure on it. If you ever need to like get it you know cracked loose but don't put too much pressure because you can warp things but uh this one did come apart just by working it i say i've never had this one apart before though and uh you can see the circuit board inside looks like the bearing is uh, somewhat okay the grease is definitely dried up oh yeah the grease is pretty bad shape looks like it's got a lot of miles on it um one of the main things i always check first right off the bat is this this motor, uh, because the bearings can go bad, uh, there's a bearing in the back side here, there's a bearing in the face here, and if that bearing in the back side goes bad, this motor will have a lot of play in this gear. And so I'm gonna check this, and there is absolutely no play in that gear. It feels really good. I can feel a tiny, tiny bit, just barely. And that's, that's good. It also sounds pretty good, so that's great. Uh, so we'll set this aside and uh, why don't we pull the gears out of this thing the gears look okay but we'll clean them up we'll take a good inspection of them the gear the grease is obviously dried up in this thing this thing's probably got half a million miles or two, at least two or three hundred thousand miles of use on it it looks like uh, just looking at the grease and the you know the the uh, the uh, contamination in here it looks like it's got a little bit of contamination in it as well and if you can zoom in right there and see a little bit of just a little bit of, uh, looks like moisture contamination got in there on that grease and stuff. You can kind of see it right in here on the teeth of those gears. It's hard to tell, but um, otherwise it looks okay. The gasket looks a little flattened out. So we'll take this gasket off of here, and I think I'm going to try to save it. Uh, what I'll probably do is um, um, <clears throat> put a, some some silicone conformal coating on it, or maybe some electro shield or something else to try to uh, uh, let the uh, you know build up the gasket a little bit and give it make it so that it can reseal when we put it back together rather than replace it because I don't have a way to buy this gasket, obviously. So we will uh, just try to let it relax. Give it a little bit of silicone spray and uh, clean it up and this and that before we get it back on there. It looks really good. Uh, it looks like maybe the the gasket was a little bit deformed here, but it looks okay. Okay. All right. So let's take that off. Put that aside. Um, how we get the gears out of here? Now that's a little tricky. To take the gears out, <clears throat> this, this smaller gear is under the bigger gear. The bigger gear 
uh, actually has a ring. Uh, let me see if I can find a spare or a bigger gear that was taken out of it at one point. There we go. I have one here. Um, the bigger gear actually has uh, a lip on it. So the smaller gear is going to be mesh. This part of the smaller gear is going to be meshed up in here. So I can't just pull this gear out without the smaller gear coming with it. So you kind of have to take them both out. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to take and put it upside down. And there's a couple of ways to do this. You could use a press or you could use a, a, a bit of a hammer or this or that to get it out. But you can't hammer on it too hard. You can't knock on it too hard. Um, I think I have over here something I can use maybe on this smaller one to get in that hole. Yeah, to push on that gear. And then maybe uh, I need a, a soft mallet. Do we have a soft mallet? Cut. Rolling. Okay, I found a you know, cheapy old uh, soft mallet. This is just a piece of metal that I've had laying around the shop. I bang on things with. It's, I think it's an old nail, actually. A roofing nail or a huge nail spike or something I turned down on my machine at one point. So I'm just going to tap this. Um, actually, I think I'm going to have to get this on a better surface. Maybe. Uh, we'll try it like this. We'll try to hang on to it like this. Maybe put your hand here and hold that end. I tap on it. You ready? Can you see it on the camera? Mm-hmm. You just have to tap on this a little bit. Yep, I'm feeling it. It came down a little bit. And we'll tap this one. It moved a little bit. And we'll tap this one. Yep, and this one. <laughs> Is that going to ice? Here we go. Yep. And this one. This wants to come out of my vice here. I don't want to squeeze it too hard, it's aluminum. There we go. There we go. That's great. So the two gears uh, were in there like this. So there's just enough, you don't want to try to take one without the other. So, but uh, I'll get some paper towels. Yeah, you can see the moisture. Uh, if you can get down on the camera, you can see where the moisture, some moisture got in there and caused a little bit of contamination on the teeth. I don't think it's going to hurt it, but we'll look at it. You know, a little bit of rust there. Yeah, a little spot there. But uh, we'll clean this up really good and uh, make sure the teeth of the gears and everything look okay. And then we'll remove this, this cap bearing here. Um, and then we'll also remove these bearings because uh, we can replace all these bearings with new ones. Uh, yeah, they're cool. Oh, that bearing will turn, but it's really... Oh, yeah, that bearing is going bad. It's, it, it, feels like, uh, it feels like I'm rubbing my fingernails across this gear. You hear this? That's exactly what this feels like. It's going... Oh, yeah, that bearing shot. It's, it feels really bad. That one feels good, but uh, you can tell it's dry. Yeah. So yeah, we have a bad bearing there. Uh, this bearing here feels okay. But uh, I have new ones, so we'll just put new ones in it as we go along. Now there's a there's a magnet right here. This is actually a magnet. And uh, the circuit board for this thing uh, has a sensor on it uh, right here. That sensor on the circuit board is a magnetic pickup sensor for this gear and as it goes around i think that's over the top of it there yeah as it goes around that's that's how it knows where zero is on the gear every time the, the thing cranks up and you know does its initial checks uh it, it looks for that magnet and says okay i know where i'm at and then does its calibration or you know positions itself based on the calibration that you've done because these things do need to be calibrated but other than that there's really no um 
no problem taking these gears in and out and this kind of stuff. You're not going to lose any kind of special alignment because just removing this whole thing off the top of the turbo uh, makes it lose its calibration overall. So, um, you know, anytime you take this thing off the turbo, you have to recalibrate it anyway. So you're not losing anything more than, you know, the fact that you got to recalibrate the actuator when you put it back on. So it's not going to be any worse. Let's, uh, let's clean these gears up really well and come back. Cut.